Just be man, no DJ. What up, man? Hey. Shout out to my brother. Don't you know him? <laughs> that is actually my brother, and he was just with Jazzy Jeff yesterday. Hey. So I'm, I'm jealous, man. And so I'm gonna call him after this podcast yeah, he and hear about up. the story. Yeah, he, he, he turned it up. He's super turned up. I love it. Hey, didn't I right, shout out to Young Oracle for having uh some sounds on the Young Jazzy Jeff joint too. Oh yeah, on uh, the song Undefeated. E. I was gonna say with Glenn Lewis, but I think all of them have Glenn Lewis. <laughs> Executive produced Glenn Lewis, Glenn Lewis. <laughs> featuring Glenn Lewis. <laughs> Videos produced by Glenn, Glenn. Lewis. Additional production Glenn Lewis. <laughs> and if you guessed it, singing backgrounds Glenn Lewis. <laughs> Actually, Ashanti. No. <laughs> no shit. Uh, Spencer D, what up, man? He says, how was the trip? Man, incredible, man. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. My man came back with them stories. Every time I go to L.A., for me, I end up in a situation where it's one of them stories. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> man, do all that. It's one of them stories. If I told y'all, y'all wouldn't believe me. So I just had to, like, take sneak and take a couple pictures and just tell my friends about it. You can't put it on social media. Nah. Yeah, it's one of them nights. A couple of those nights. So great. You know, it was great. It was great. Glad to be back, though. Glad to be part of the podcast. You know what I mean? Yeah. Got the homie the African in here. We got ragheads. What I'll be wagging if I, I got reboot. I got reboot. Reboot! Do you remember that show called Reboot? Nah. If y'all in the chat remember Reboot, that was my shit. That's some real tsunami. You know what I mean? And right after Dragon Ball Z, Tenchi Muyo. You know what I mean? You got to be about that life to know about uh, Reboot. 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 Hey, bro, what up, man? Yo, anyway, shout out to everybody. I was in, uh, Young Oracle was at the I Standard, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. I was in the chat, bro. And, and y'all was in there representing, man. That's what I heard. No, y'all was in there super representing. I'm Quantize family holding it down. Gang, gang, squad, squad. Man, restart this shit, man. Sorry, guys. We having hella technical difficulties. We have, not only technical difficulties, he got hit about a song that he's supposed to send stems to. <laughs> then I immediately got hit about a song I'm supposed to send stems to. Yeah. And, uh, you know, declarations. Real real producer stuff. Facts. Hey, tip I learned when I was in L.A. If you make a beat and you think it's going to be super jamming, you think people going to like it, go ahead and track it out there. Yeah. Because... Just like that, I start doing that, and then that beat is what people call and ask for for the track outs. So, yeah, and luckily I ain't have, you know, the podcast was, was like five minutes before the podcast. Yep. So if I had to go track it out, it would have been, I wouldn't have been able to get it done. I sent it to you tonight. I, I sent that to you ASAP Rocky, ASAP Ferg. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, never force shut down your computer, Oracle. Look, dog, I never do. But listen, this is for the second time. I force my shit down for y'all. For you. <laughs> my hard drive might fit because of you. Yeah, I, I never forced uh, force shut down. I definitely didn't even say my able to set or nothing, but. Oh, shit. Hey, man, sometimes you got to do that. I'm, I'm looking good, though. Um, Someone, we're we not, who asked about the keyboard? I don't think Oracle's. You're not, you're not at that place yet, are you? Um, mm-mm. But. It's coming soon? Yeah, I want to do like a whole video on it. Yeah, he's going to do a review on it. But I have the uh, blacked out no name edition. Yeah. So. This is this is the tester, you know what I mean? This is the no, the no name edition. <laughs> no brand. Keyboard. No brand. Peanut butter, no brand. Did y'all check out that Teddy Riley interview on Red Bull? Whoa. On who? Oh, on Red Bull. Oh, oh, nope. Gotta check that I out. I have it. Though. I feel like somebody sent it to me. Um, Trizzy, you give track out without some type of contract? Well, it de- y- yeah, it depends on what it's for. Yeah, you gotta know the situation yeah. and the people involved. Yeah, we, I definitely have some advice from the, pr- the placement perspective. Coming back from L.A. and just been working, been in these sessions, definitely got some advice for you guys. Some stuff that I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> they said, why is your desktop so organized and clean? <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> That's fact. Um, I forgot what I'm looking at. Nah, I got screenshots all over my damn desktop. Nah, I got random photos of beats I have sent out. Man, listen, y'all know I got to be organized and, and, and clean. Or else life just ain't going to be right for you, boy. Uh, let's do this. Uh, yeah, if, it, if the whole interview with the Teddy Riley, please... Let it, let us know. <clears throat> right. Because I definitely want to watch that drink, too. I need to. 
I said a reminder for the night. Let a nigga know. Let a nigga know. You get it. Let it. Okay, man. No more Uzi. All right, just music and lyrics. What up, man? What's up, man? Rabbit Roddy. What up, homie? Rabbit showing love. Like, that's a new thing. But appreciate you, bro. Uh, Monique, what up? Who's that? Monique who? Uh, Monique K. McHale? Hey, that's my homegirl. Hey. Hey, Mo, I was just telling my man about that story about everybody riding riding down 450. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, that's funny you said Mo. Because <laughs> it's, it's, it can apply in so many ways. <laughs> it's the DMV Mo. Right, the DMV Mo and the Mo. What up, Mo? <laughs> uh, All right, I'm about to get this up in a minute. Sound Oracle, you can only have one. The NPC Touch or the Machine. Mm. Machine. There you go. You heard it here first, folks. Machine. <laughs> yeah, I just want to be able to view today. Because it's my junk being crazy. Does that make me cry? Uh, <laughs> Bigger1973, what do y'all think of Tiller's new project? I only heard a couple joints. Oh, yeah. I only heard the joints. Uh, the homies, uh, Aeon Keys did. Shout out to them. Yeah. If y'all don't, if y'all know Aeon yeah, Keys, we did jujitsu. That Chris Brown record that just came out. Didn't you hear that on the radio? Today? Yeah, I heard it on the radio for first time today. It got added to top forty radio, so I'm I'm happy, especially about the top forty. That's super dope. And if y'all heard it in y'all city, or be on please. the lookout for it on the radio. Please send me, send me a video. If y'all hear jujitsu on the radio, please send me a video. Y'all listen to it. I would greatly appreciate it. That's, hey, that shit is jamming. I ain't gonna lie. I'm, hey. I'm you know I'm critical of music. That shit, A1, bro. I appreciate it, man. But yeah, AO, AO and Keys did uh, that joint with me. They're also on the Bryson joint. Somebody else I know is on there. But yeah, I haven't checked it out yet, but you know. Shout out, shout out, shout out. Okay. I don't know, man. So I don't know if people in there just, you know, they still talking talking shit or whatever. We got a few topics today. Yeah, huh? we got We actually things. prepared with topics. Man. A little bit. Uh, did y'all try the movement plug-in yet? Yes. Who makes that? Is the that output. output. Oh, yeah, of course. If it's yeah. the output, dog. All output. No, output everything. Except for analog strings. I didn't get that yet. Oh, yeah. I haven't tried that one yet either. It's the whole strings thing. Like, I'm not a huge... I don't need a lot of strings. You're right. I don't know when I would really use them. Unless I'm, like, scoring some... Which is never. Never. Rarely. Never. Not now, never. Um, oh, the strings is crazy as well? Okay. I might have to get it, man. Yeah, Output does great. Output, yo, if y'all need some good, like, plugins, Output doesn't really disappoint. No. I don't think I, they've made something that I don't really like. They've been my favorites for, like, it's going on, like, four months now. But people yeah. are like, yo, what's, what you using now? What's your favorites? I'm like, anything about Output, straight up. Facts. Jericho Beats, what's up, man? What's happening, bro? And, oh, shout out to Jericho Beats, right? I'm going to talk about this, Jericho, but I, I, I applaud you on this. So, Jericho... <laughs> He remixed one of my beats. For me, it was weird because I just it was kind of came out of nowhere. And what people would do is people would act like they made a beat with me and they'll tag me in it. That's so I, I'm like, yo, like I'm not really a fan of it. But shout out to Jericho. He was cool about it. He he sent me a super respectful message, man. We got an understanding. He ain't mean no harm. It was cool. So that's what I, yo appreciate you for being cool about it, man. And you understanding? So, Jer- yeah, I appreciate Jericho's it. a real one. Yeah, you're a real one. I appreciate it, man. Don't. Shout out to you. Um, let's see. Shout out to Umami. What up? Scoots Claws. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's the new joint today. <laughs> I don't know. I think she was waiting for that one, right? Oh she yeah, okay. That, that's all you get for today. <laughs> she was like, "Just gotta make that sound." I was in her live feed <laughs> up there. She was like, you "Gotta make that glick glick sound." Yeah, I don't know what the... Is, is it the designer sound that I do? The yeek, yeek, yeek. Yo. That might be it. What is the designer sound? Just noise. No, if you haven't watched his Breakfast Club interview... I didn't see that. He just like, hey, man, I don't know what I'm talking about. Man. Yeah. Yeek, yeek, yeek. That's like the whole interview. I'm like, no, if you, could, if you couldn't make that noise, <laughs> what, what else would you say in place of that noise? Facts. Young CR the show. Bro, I actually was freestyling earlier and fit you in the freestyle, dog. And Spacehead Life. And Spacehead Life in a freestyle. Y'all missed it. It was kind of dope, too. I ain't gonna lie. My man had some bars. Y'all get one freestyle every five years. <laughs> yeah, I, 
Tristan definitely surprised me with that one. I was like, oh, shit. I'm like, is that, a, is that the real song? He fit the names in there so good. In a climate where there's a lot of beats that sound the same, an artist that wants the same sounding beats, uh, hold on, that want the same sound, this selling, okay, do you recommend for trying to be unique or having a different sound? Yes. Yes. Those are the same thing. Yeah. But I, I get what he's saying. Yeah. Though. Yeah, like, be unique. Definitely find your sound, but know what's happening and what, what people are liking. But not only know what people are liking, but know why they like it. Right. Because once you can break things down to the elements, you can incorporate certain elements into your music without losing your identity with trying to be current. Right. You know, it's you got to, like, marry the best of both worlds. And I look at it, too, like, it's a McDonald's on every corner. If you're going to open up a restaurant, you don't have to do McDonald's. Just because McDonald's is working. There you go. Yo, you can open up a Burger King, Wendy's. You know, you might not make as much as that McDonald's that you think of, but it's still a great career in doing... Exactly. You know what I mean? And the What do you think of Ableton? I don't really touch it. I use Cubase 7.5. All right, you're new here, so listen. I ain't going to ask. I know you're new here. As you can see in the background... No, it's, it's Ableton City in this joint. <laughs> so what, what we think of Ableton, it's amazing. Cubase was the second dog... I use and I use Cubase for years. It, it's dope. It's dope. But once you get, you got to break your mind out of the linear phase. And that brings me to my next point. Hey, Shout out yeah. to young Trizza, who told me he finally <laughs> saw the light on Session View. I'm converted. Ableton. I'm converted over, man. My man is good. I've tried the new things and I'm with it, bro. Dope. The young Session View, I slept on it. I ain't going to front. I was being lazy. I just didn't want to learn it because I was used to my way. Yeah, just the, the linear. Yeah, uh, but it makes so much sense now. Yeah. But I think I just need to see it. I think I need to see it in action, and then I'm like, oh, okay, this is how I would use it. Yeah, and, and now see, I'm seeing it for me is not... Yeah, you know. it's confusing. Y'all don't understand. Oracle's Ableton and my Ableton ain't the same Ableton. Yeah, like, I'm not the best with, like, oh, let me show you session view based off my session, because it's... His is crazy. Yeah. His looks like Tetris. Am I? <laughs> look like Tetris when you're about to lose. Like, right. There's no more room on there. <laughs> this joint look crazy. So I just never mess with it, but it's definitely helpful. Yo, but that's dope. That's super dope. So shout out to you for that. Yo. Ace Nito, what up, man? I was actually trying to get up with young Ace while I was in there. Yeah. yeah. But I didn't know, man, I didn't know when I was going to sleep out there. Right. You'd be like, yo, come, come through. You're like, Oh, yeah, I'm not there no more. Literally, my L.A. was, I'm out of my Airbnb all day, and then I take a nap, and then I go to the studio, and then I'm out. Good times, man. Wait, fun, so funny you should say that. Airbnb versus a hotel. Airbnb. Airbnb all day. Anytime. That's all everybody's doing now. People aren't even doing hotels anymore. Dog, because it's cheaper to do an Airbnb, and you get yeah, everything. Yeah, you get your own shit, too. The, the one I had this last time was so high-tech, bro. So that your key was an app on the iPhone. Right. So you had to sign up, do all the stuff. So you just press it. It's Bluetooth. You walk up, you press it, unlocks the door, locks the door. Nice. Um, everything's automated through the phone. Damn. Yeah, it was flat out. Super yeah. easy. I think on my next trip, because I'm, I'm a hotel guy. Right. Like, I'll go to hotels in my own city just because I like staying at hotels. Staycation. Yeah, so I'm, I'm going to check out the Airbnbs. I'm going to start here. Actually start here in this city. It's just like, yeah, I'm going to stay at the Airbnb for a weekend. On some business thing, yeah. that opened me up to thinking about getting a crib just for the Airbnb. Because the way they had it, it's automated, dog. They literally had a cleaner. It's right after we left, a cleaner comes in. Mm -hmm. She's just scheduled. Do the whole And clean the whole thing. The girl never left her crib. It's funny. Uh, my wife and I were talking about that mm -hmm. a while ago because, you know, she got, she got her own business. And... She's getting into uh, the automation of having people come and, you know, with the Bluetooth right. and, and the phone to get in and out. That's the wave, though. Might be the wave, That's man. the wave. Hey. Airbnb wave. Do you use any free plugins or are you all about money makes good plugins? Nah, I use free plugins all yeah. the time. Um, it's some, definitely some good ones. Do stock plugins count as free plugins? I guess not. Yeah. I use stock plugins a lot. But free plugins, we were just talking about one earlier. Mm -hmm. Sausage Fattener. That's, that joint is free. Is it? I thought it was free. 
I don't think so. No? No. Oh. Then no, I guess I don't use any free play. <laughs> What's that drink that uh, Polo used to use? He used it for that Pussycat Dolls drink. Polo used to kill the lead off of that. Um, oh, what Is it was uh, it? Crystal? Is that what it's called? Yeah, Crystal. Crystal's free. Uh, yeah, Crystal's. Yo, Crystal's free, and it had this sound effect on it. I use that joint in like 80% of my beats for like 10 years. <laughs> nah, that shit is the way, man. It's like the most awesome transition effect ever. That, and what was the other one? Uh, it's like a distortion joint. Is it Camel? Camel? Camel Crusher. Is that one free? Camel Crusher or Camel Fat? I think Camel one of them. Crusher is free. Yeah. Those are dope. I yeah. would check those out. Yeah, Cam- well, Camel Audio makes dope stuff. They make um, Alchemy. Um, they made something else I was using the other day, too. Oh, shit, I, ain't, I forgot about that. And depending on, too, if you use Ableton, Max for Live, the shit. Yo. Y'all sleep on it. If Yeah, if you use Ableton, you have Max for Live now. If you use an Ableton 9, mm. go to the Max for Live uh, site. Thousands of free plugins. Like, no joke, thousands made by users. Can't beat that. No, and I, the, this is a crazy story. I guarantee you, my daughter will probably be named via Ableton because you know they have a name generator. Yep. So basically, I, all I've been doing is putting all the names that we'd like for her in the name generator, and I'm randomly and it came up with some dope shit. I'm like, yo, this is gonna be the hardest shit. I definitely need a free push if I name my child from an Ableton name generator. No, we gonna promote. We gonna promote the hell out of no, it. No, yeah, I'm. I'm putting a video out. Young Snarina. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, little Omnisphere. Young Snarina. Little Omnisphere. <laughs> Go to your room. Salim. I'm going to call her Trisha Julius. She's going to be TJ to me. Damn it, Massive. Go to your room. <laughs> oh, man. We're not doing this today, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we, yeah we, this is a different type of Friday, right? Yeah. Here. I already see it's a different type of Friday. We, guys, we've had a good time. I don't know if y'all remember the Cosby show where they referenced <laughs> with Steve. And we talked about it one time, but Steve Wonder's like jamming on the one, jamming on the one. I literally said, and two seconds later, Oracle plays the thing. And I'm like, how the fuck did you do that? Yo, funny enough, <laughs> he said jamming on the one. I had that video <laughs> up on my computer <laughs> from the Cosby show. <laughs> Like, up, uh, just all I had to hit was a space bar. He didn't even know I had it. Yeah, up. I was facing the other way. Yesterday. I was facing the other way, so I didn't even realize. I just started playing it. He was like, what the? <laughs> yeah, that see you on the show internet, man. <laughs> he was like, wait, I just said that as just like a random thing. You pulled up the episode. Of the year, Like, bro. not only the episode, but the exact The, the exact moment. Literally. It's funny, but that's that's my dog. He brought up a random thing, <laughs> and I happened to be thinking about and doing something with that random thing 24 hours ago. That's like, uh, I don't know if y'all watched Disney back in the day. They'd be like, great minds think for themselves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, great minds think alike. No, great minds think for themselves. <laughs> but I think a lot of people think alike, too, sometimes. Yeah, yeah that's funny. Uh, it spins D. Have you ever had someone who you considered your boy come at you wrong for not wanting to give them a beat? Yes. If so, any tips on how to disarm the situation if it gets sticky? Um, be a professional. That's yeah. that's what I think. Yeah, I'm just just be one hundred with them because the thing is, it's like, listen, you you gotta understand this is a business. This is how I work, and if you don't understand, then hey, you don't understand. Sometimes you gotta agree to disagree. Yeah, you you can't salvage everything. It's just like if you work if somewhere else, your friend's not gonna run in there and be like, yo. Give me this. You know what I mean? If you work at a restaurant, you're not going to just be giving your friend all kinds of free food. Right. You may, but you know you run a risk it. Yeah. And then fucking Some trouble. people think that they can do... I, I encourage anybody to think they can do that. Go to the Benz dealership or something and just be like, hey, man, give me one of them cars. Mm-hmm. And, and tell, them, tell them they should give it to you for exposure or whatever crappy excuses people be using and, and see what happens. Go to any other business besides your boy who you should be wanting to give your money to anyway and see what happens. That's And, too, it might be your boy, man, but sometimes, not saying just don't mess with the person, but some people you don't necessarily need to be. Yeah. After a while, you're going to start growing, man, and people don't grow with you. It gets kind of hard to maintain those relationships. Very true. And you can't do business with all friends. Yeah. Y'all really have to be on the same page. And apparently, you and homie are definitely not on the same page. Yeah. You're like, yeah, it costs this much, and he's like, cost. So y'all, y'all before square one, not good. Facts. So the hypnotist. Everyone in here makes some sick beats. We got a nice squad. Facts. Squad. 
Squat, squat. Uh, yes, session view is good, man. I know what you mean. Facts. I'm, I'm, I seen the light. Yo, I'm 99% session view, though. Umami just messaged you, Oracle, about session view. Oh, I saw she messaged me uh, some. I think it's right when you got here. Some facts. Hey, get on that session view because it is pretty fucking cool. Definitely. And I will check that message as well. Odd question. So on Kendrick Dam, a loop uh, from a pack from Loop Master is used on the song Phil. Another song also uses the same loop, but it's credited as the original sample. I don't know how that's going to work. Yeah. What? Because then Cap Sun do some of the stuff on... Yeah, I, th- I thought the question was going to be about the Cap yeah. Sun stuff, but apparently not. Um, I don't know anything about that. So... But who, well, who credited it? That's what I want to know. Yeah. Because if it's like who sampled, they do, that's what they do. They just find out where you got the source material. Right. Okay, so I guess the question is, on the one that's listed as the original sample, does it say Loop Masters? Or, or is it like a song name? Yeah. That's a good question. And I didn't know two, sample, two of the same samples got used on two different songs on the album. Yeah, that's crazy. So if I use an Oracle loop in a song, but somebody else used it, used the loop before I did, did I have to credit them? No. No, no, no. No, no, no. Royalty free is yeah fair use. Yeah. Yeah, fair use across the board. Yeah. Facts. Hello, I am new. The phone just did that weird thing. Hold on. Uh-oh. Oh. Hello, I'm new. Uh, is it helpful for a singer to check out your advice out? Of course. Yeah. I'm Especially if you ask the question, yeah. then we can answer your specific question, and you'll catch some, you'll catch a whole lot of good information just sticking around. Cause I'm a firm believer in to be really good at something, you have to understand how to explain something to it. So even if you're a singer, you need to at least understand production to a point that you can explain it to somebody else of what you want. If that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Cause like with a podcast, yeah, we do pretty much everything ourselves now, so we can figure out how to tell somebody else to do it. Yep. You know, that's the reason why we're doing everything now. Eventually, we're not going to be doing the editing and all this stuff. Eventually, like soon. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> but <laughs> And that's true. Yeah, You as a singer, you work with producers, too. Right. So you sh- should know what producers need to know just so you have more insight into that world. Facts. Yep. Wow, your setup is super dope. Appreciate you. Hey. Wel- welcome to my, my studio. Uh, Trizzo, what's good with the video? It's pixel- pixelated. It might be your internet, homie. I don't yeah. know. Uh, we, we're not yeah. using a special version of Instagram. Yeah, yeah. Just let us know. Let us yeah. know if y'all having issues. Uh, Machine 2.6 update is a ripoff of Ableton? Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's crazy? I haven't updated my machine for the last two updates. But what about NPC? You ain't updated that either. Have you? Nope. I haven't updated to <laughs> that's hey man when you find it you, when you get in the flow I'm in man. love man what can I say I'm in love with the with this no name keyboard right here <laughs> I was focusing on this there's no brand right and that's the, the exact same time when uh, NPC beta came out but I will say this too I have three betas from three different companies on my computer I don't really like beta uh, using beta stuff right because sometimes it's quirky which is a given, you know, it's expected and you're supposed to tell them what's wrong with it. But if I'm in a, a session or whatever and I got the beta jumping off, I don't have time for problems. So right. Uh, dude, see how the show says, dude said that samples are dead. I told him it, it's Ableton gang, so he probably wouldn't understand the workflow. Now, if you say samples are dead, that they, I don't know, they might be dead in his neighborhood. But yes. Shit, I can name so many songs. Mask Off is a complete sample with just drums on top of it. Yo! It's just a loop. <laughs> Mad simple. <laughs> All right, yeah, look, I'm, I'm not even trying to go there because I can tell you a ton of songs just that loops. are samples. Right. And I know for a fact, and you know how I know for a fact. People. Sometimes I don't think people understand that it's a sample. No. Or no. even uh, somebody, when I was in L.A., someone was like, yo, what happened to Trinidad James, right? Mm-hmm. I said, yo, he just got he got writer's credit on the Bruno Mars joint. Right? They right. don't believe me, just watch. Da-da. Yeah, exactly. No, that they sampled him in a way. They interpolated him, yeah. which is a s- part of sampling. Yeah. The first time I heard that song, I was like, Trinidad got a check. Man. Immediately, he nah, got a he check. He probably got a cool milli off that joint. And even the part that comes after that, where we're like, nigga, 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 the horns play that part. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so yeah. Sampling ain't going nowhere, bro. Mm-hmm. It never will, I don't think. It won't. And it, a lot of people that say that, the the idea of sampling in their mind is not the total gambit of what sampling right. is. Or how sampling works. They think, like, it's uh, obvious, like, oh, that's such and such. Or right. It's a lot of stuff out there that samples that you don't know are samples. Facts. You know. Elisita says she missed us. Hey. Hey. Shout out to Elisita, man. We missed you, too. We missed season. all y'all, actually. Yeah, man. It felt weird without having a podcast on Friday. I'm like, damn, man. <laughs> right. I felt good. I got to go out with my wife that night, though. Uh, that was probably that cool. Was, that was pretty cool. I ain't gonna lie. I was turned up that Friday, though. <laughs> I enjoyed my Wait, Friday. Wait, you was in L.A. I'm sure your yeah. night was more turned than mine. <laughs> that was that night. That was that night where I was like, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Crazy. We'll stuff. talk about that in a second. But we need, like, a small group of people where we, we, we can just share the real crazy stories yeah I, dog, sometimes I just want to have a group of people that I can just share these random photos and crazy shit that I deal with right it don't go on social but just like yeah just just a small trusted group yeah cause I don't want people to think I'm lying about some of these stories I see them yeah I know the story I hear the stories and, and I you know I yeah. know what's going on man listen we need a focus group for the, the wild stories mm-hmm. <laughs> uh Jovan Malik says how did Oracle study sound design or learn how to make sounds? Uh, from listening to music. From listening to music and um, wanting to make music. I'm like, well, where do these people get these sounds from? Uh, obviously, samples. I recognize samples. Breakbeats. I knew about breakbeats. But the other sounds, I would just take from the records and be like, ah, oh, this horn part would be good here. And I'd take that horn part. or mm. And that's how I learned. I learned from sampling. But then once you sample... The thing is, when you hear a whole song, your mind can't wrap around how to make that whole song. But if you break it down to a small sound, yeah. like, like a... Like, oh, that's a such and such. Oh, it sounds like that. You can recreate that. And then mm-hmm. you just kind of get in the habit. Well, I got in the habit of recreating very small parts of songs. And then you understand how you, to recreate a whole thing. Brick by brick. Yep. There you go. Uh, Trizza, you recorded a dude playing an instrument on the street corner. Did you sample him? Dog, I wanted to, bruh. My phone was out on like 19%, dog. Dog, I was at Santa Monica on the pier. Oh, yeah. They dog, out there. This dude played, when I was there, I seen him play six instruments. At the same time, dog, like, not all of them at the same time, but he'll yeah. play like the trumpet. As soon as he put the trumpet down, pick up a guitar, play it. As soon as, it, same song, though. So what you put it on? Oh, it was on my Insta uh, story. Uh, story? Oh, damn. Yeah. I was about to be like, you did record it. If you got the video, you recorded yeah, but it. But I was, I wanted to say him just like, really, I was going to sample his ass for real, for real. I sent, I, man, man, that iPhone recording. I'm like, I'm going to have to work with this. Nah, I had to call the Uber. That's why I was like, man, oh, my phone yeah. was going dead as hell. I knew I had to call that Uber. I was like, oh, decisions. Yeah. That happened to me last night. <laughs> I, I, I Ubered down to the joint last night. I'm like, I'm finna hit this other joint. I was like, oh, 19%, no backup battery. I'm finna go home. Yeah, gee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm finna go home. Uh, you dropped knowledge yesterday at SAE? Oh, that's the who said that? That was Nike Psychic. Nike Psyche? Nike yeah. Psyche? Nike Psyche. <laughs> I appreciate you, Nike Psyche. <laughs> that's actually yeah. dope. Like, Nike like the brand, Psyche right. like, oh, that's dope. I had, um, man, I had fun. I had super fun doing that panel. It was awesome. I saw a lot of people, I, uh, a lot of people that follow me that I never met before, like uh, DJ Five Star P. I saw my man Strict Nine Music that I hey. I met him a, a few times already. Right. And so when I see him, he's like, "Hey man, uh, first of all, thank you for the compliment on the Oracle percussion loops." He's like, "Man, I got percussion loops is super dope." I'm like, "Thanks." Then he jokingly was like, "Hey man, I'll be in on a podcast tomorrow." So Triz would be easy on that reason. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck no, no. <laughs> so I was about to say. So since since you said that Triz has agreed to talk about reason, even worse than he has already. Yeah, before. I'm gonna talk That's... real greasy on it. I'm talking about reason, mama. I'm talking about <laughs> the, all of it. Who developed <laughs> reason? Fuck them niggas. The... Shout out to Strict Nine Music though, man. Shout out to Strict Nine, man. Yeah, yeah. He's a he's a super avid uh, reason user. Though. Hey, yeah. Sebastian Beat says Camel Crusher. Is it Winkle and Free Bass Grind or Super Dope? Okay. Free plugins. Hey. Hey, guys. Check them out. Hey. Us. Spence D says, what are 10 business tips one should know and utilize when kicking off their music career? Man, that's a great question. But Spence D, 10 tips? (laughs) 10? I'd say one really good one is treat it like a business. It is a business. And honestly, establish it like a business. Get, get, uh, um... 
a tax ID number. Like, really make it a real business. Because think about it. If you say, oh, I have a business and I do this and you kind of do it, you could just stop. And But something about, like, if you register your business with mm-hmm. your county that you live in and you get a tax ID, it's not just something that is disposable to you now. Like, mm-hmm. you could always just stop it. It's not going to hurt you. You're not going to lose right. any money. But you're like, damn, I, I established this as a business. Like, I'm listed in my county as mm-hmm. a business. You're going to treat it a lot more seriously. And there's something about paying for stuff and, like, that makes you own it. You invest in it. You're investing in yourself. That is the first step to showing that you're serious. Facts. And the thing is, it's not about the money that you spend. That's just beneficial to the person on the other side. But the benefit to you is that you're up in the stakes Mm -hmm. for yourself. So you can't really back out of it. Exactly. And that's what people really need. Because sometimes... A lot of times, honestly, you don't have the discipline to do everything that you want to do. But once you start locking in the stuff, like telling people about it, start paying for stuff, mm-hmm. now you're like, oh, I got to treat this seriously. You're, you're definitely obligated. Yeah. For example, subculture. I had mentioned it. I had been planning it, but I just set a date on the podcast. Yep. And I wasn't ready, but it made me, I'm like, damn, I got to fucking finish it. I, I'm obligated to it because I've talked about it now. And that was dope, too. And it's dope. Yo, shout out to you guys. We, we got to tell you, it's been at least three, four things that happened because we said it would happen while we were taking this show. <laughs> and it's like, all right, we got to well, do it now. You can't not have it. Now. We definitely <laughs> told all these people that we're going to do this on this date. We should do that. So you got to have something that's bigger than you that's going to hold you accountable. Yeah. So that's what you guys are for us. You guys kind of hold us accountable. Yep. You got to figure out what's your thing that's going to hold you accountable. Everybody need like a, an accountability buddy. There you go. You got you to gotta get that, man. Tell a group of people, or just tell somebody that's going to give you a hard time if you don't do it. Like, yo, I'm doing this. And if you don't do it, they're going to be like, yo, same. You're fake. Facts. You need an accountability buddy. Facts. Yep. You don't want to be fake. No. <laughs> Omega uh, H. Madan. What advice can you give about structure as far as intro and stuff? Um, I got I I got an answer. Go ahead. Study. Mm-hmm. S- study your favorite songs and also study what's current. And you'll learn you'll learn a lot. Like, take a song that's popular, and you don't have to like the song, but just look at how it's arranged. And I'm pretty sure you'll see a lot of songs that are popular now. And I assume you're talking about a current structure that people like. You'll notice patterns. Exactly. Like the intro is two bars and then it goes into the verse. Or it's four bars and goes into the chorus or whatever it may mm-hmm. be. And then honestly, take structures from other songs. Like taking somebody's song structure and then applying it. You're going to have to change it around right. eventually because it's going to be your song. It's going to be totally different. But yeah, like, to start out, copy song structures. And, you know, just just work them around your thing. Now, sometimes the uh, a four-bar intro might not be suitable for what you're doing. So mm-hmm. do a two-bar intro. But just take something else to start as a starting point, like a preset and a VST. Where you, If you want to tweak your own sounds, you can start with a preset right. and then just start changing it. Do that. And my advice, I would say, is the song is key. Yeah. And it, me being in L.A. made me really remember that. Like, you know, I've been working, and I've just been doing beats and stuff lately. Mm-hmm. I haven't really been working with songwriters as much. And it made me realize, going to L.A. and working made me realize, like, damn, this is the important part, too. Yeah, it's, That's what separates, I think, the, the songwriter and the producer. I mean, the, the, the beat maker mm-hmm. and the producer is the, the understanding of the writing is the key of everything. And how to get the writer to make the best record. Right, and the crazy the crazy thing about that is if you just make beats and you don't work with writers and you don't work on songs, arrangement is something you have to force yourself to mm-hmm. think about in a complete fashion. Right. You, you know, you might be like, all right, here's the verse, here's the chorus, mm-hmm. I might make an intro. But when you when you are thinking, like, song, really song-wise, like, all right, here's the bridge. And even though this is another mm-hmm. verse, it should change, something should change in the verse. Right. You know? And if you dog, ask Oracle, if I'm making a beat, I'm over here mumbling shit. Yep. I'm over here rapping. Yeah. I can't rap. Well, I'm I'm cool. I, I don't know. You dropped some bars before. Yeah, I, I, dro- I just don't like my voice. I don't have a rapper voice. You know how Quavo got that rapper yeah. voice? I ain't got the rapper Nobody voice. Nobody likes that voice. Yeah. But I don't know, man. I feel like the Migos like their voice because they got a crazy. Their tone is just like. Well, if you get paid a million dollars because yeah. your voice is on something, you learn to love your voice. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, 
Hey, sometimes you got to rap on your own shit, man. That's how you yeah. get it. That's how you understand. Because you know where you want it to be. You don't want your verses to be the busiest part of the song. Yeah. You should be able to see the song or at least see certain things about the song. So when you get with a songwriter or an artist, you have these suggestions because you made the beat. So you have an intimate connection with the beat. And they may have a better suggestion right. than you, but just have some direction. Like, oh, the flow might be like this or it might go like this. You never know. Facts. Panther 08, what up, man? Thundercats. He says, uh, ho! He says, uh, yo, have you guys work late night with your ear canceling earphones and scared the shit out of yourself by accidentally treating on an odd sound? Yes. Yes. I pretty much scare myself with headphones on about once a week. Yeah. It's guaranteed. I don't use headphones a lot, though. Uh, but every time I do, I guarantee you I scare myself. See, lately I've been working at like 2 in the morning. So I, I just, you know, I can't be in the crib just blasting at 2 in the morning. Now, I did do a whole day of sound design with headphones on using uh, using this joint right here. Oh, shit. Yeah, so uh, I took the headphones out. But yeah, I was on that joint for a whole day with headphones on. Facts. Uh, Rackhead says, do you have any tips for commitment? Yeah. Um, like making a commitment? I guess just like making setting a goal and, and fulfilling it. And stay, sticking with it. Oh, you can go back to the accountability person. Mm -hmm. You can definitely do that. Write things down. Write thing like um, you know, whiteboard style. Everyone has a phone. You got a calendar on your phone. Um, put put things on your calendar. Mm -hmm. Set reminders on your phone. Just all the time. You have to like constantly be bombarded by stuff. If you say mm -hmm. you're gonna do something and then you never have to interact with that thought ever again. You may not do it. It's easier to not do it. Right. But if every day, something on your phone is like, bing, on Wednesday, such and such, mm -hmm. you got to do this. You're going to be like, I really got to do that. I think that might be the biggest tip I've learned recently. Because now I have to see it. If I put yeah. something in this list, I know at least three times a day I'm going to see that I need to do this. Yeah. And then at a point, it just gets on my nerves. Like, all right, I got to fucking get this off my list. We are we are uh, app, app and list junkies. Though. Oh, yeah. No, I literally Trello everything in my life. Everything in my life right now has a Trello board. Yeah. I ever know everything in my See? life. But then it goes to Trello. Trello. <laughs> Say, you know what I mean? That's how you got to do it. You, people think that none of this stuff is by accident. Everything that you guys see that we're doing, it's very thought out. It's very... If you see us getting placements, guess what? It's because we're thinking about how to get our music. Not that we're thinking about, oh, I need to get a placement, but... Our mind is, okay, how do we make the best song? How do we get it to the most people? Who's the people that need to hear this? Right. And that's very strategic. You know what I mean? So Who's working right now? Exactly. So it's not like a just hoping and wishing something comes about. It's a very strategic of, all right, we're going to do this. And if I do something that's dope, it's going to go here, here, and here. This person's going to hear it. Yeah. So that's how I would say, with commitment, man... Map it out. No, if you're driving somewhere, you are gonna put it in ways. If you don't know how to get there, mm -hmm. you kind of gotta know, you know, some direction on something. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you don't have to know exactly where you're going. Just kind of guess, and then you kind of make adjustments. Very true. Facts. How to get music placements? I'm with BMI. BMI has nothing. Nothing to do with, to do with placements. <laughs> yeah. So just get that out your head. BMI kicks in. After you got the placement. Facts. They don't help you get placements <laughs> at yeah. all. So, no, no, no. So how do you get uh, music placements? You make good music and you network. Yes. Relationships. Uh, for those of you that watched the SAE thing yesterday, you know a lot of that was about relationships. And um, every it was four of us up there. It was me, Amon Jackson, uh, Nonstop from 808 Mafia, and Mark Berg. Hey. We all told... Various stories, and all of those stories I pointed out included one phrase if I hadn't been there at that time, or if I hadn't done such and such. You, you gotta have these, you gotta establish relationships with these people because there's a story where it's like, Oh, I met such and such, he was doing that, and we kicked it off, and it was cool. Then two years later, he was doing such and such, right. and he hit me like, but and that's how I got on the whatever album. Mm -hmm. That is how. I say 80% of this works. And I, uh, I, again, this LA trip was one of them trips, dog, for me where I just learned so much. I feel like people skip the fact of trying to get really good at something. They just want the, the gratification Overnight, of it. Overnight, right? Because I was in situations, dog, that most people I feel like would choke on it. I had to make beats in front of people. 
what I I'll get into the story later, but I'll say the house that I was in about fifteen million dollar house. In front of a lot of big people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? People you've seen on TV and all that shit. One super special person that's your going in. <laughs> yeah. And, and and I had to make a beat right there on the spot. Yeah. I feel like if you haven't done those 10,000 hours, you're not going to be ready for that kind of shit. That's true. You're going to panic. And even myself, I had to be like, all right, you got to fucking perform. It's like the NBA, bro. This is a good big game. You got to show up and perform. the time, right? All right. So, and then I just took a deep breath. All right, what do you do? What's the com- what's comfortable for you? Cool. You start here. I load up an Oracle loop. Boom. You know what I mean? Hey. Got in the pocket. You know what I mean? Figured out the chords. Boom. Made a great song. Mm-hmm. But it took me years of messing up to figure this out. And so what I'm telling you guys is don't fucking rush to the trying to make money part. You have to have a good product. No matter what, if you don't have a good product, none of the other shit is going to matter. No. So you might think your music, your music might be cool, but guess what? It's plenty of cool people. Everyone's talented now. Nah. Everyone's talented. Everybody. It's really how you separate yourself. Yeah. And that's where you're going to see the difference. Super true. Uh, how do you get music placements in movie, TV, commercials? Hmm. Huh. Alright. Placements seem to be a big theme today. hmm Well, with movies and, and licensing, I always say look for the smaller companies. Don't go for big companies. I hate to shit on them all the time, but they're one right. of the biggest companies that come to mind, like PMP or Pump Audio. Those are like big licensing companies that have thousands of producers. Right. You're not going to get any type of attention. You're just going to get mixed into a whole big batch of stuff and see no light. But if you could find a small, a small licensing agency where you can actually talk to the person that owns it, they know you, you know them, and they actually get work done, that's where you'll see the best results. But the thing is, look for smaller boutique licensing agencies that are actually getting work. That's your best way. Thanks. 808 on the beat. What up, man? 808. Um, how to level up and study sound design. I, mean, I think it goes back to one of those things we just talked about. You, it's no way to skip past certain stuff, guys. Yeah. At some point, you're going to make bad beats. The, but the thing is, you just have to understand, I'm going to make bad beats at some point. Right. And so the quicker you understand that, the quicker you get through it. Now, mm-hmm. I, I know, to me, it's a numbers game. I know if I make 10 beats, I know four of them are going to be okay. They're going to yep. be dope. You know, people are going to like, it's going to be about three of them that I'm not really going to care for. But it's going to be two that's special. Mm-hmm. It's going to be two that I'm like, ooh. And it's going to be one that's just super like, all right. Right. It's a numbers game. So I, me knowing this already, I know that I have to keep making stuff to get it. Same thing goes with sounds. Yeah. And another thing with sound design, it's really uh, experimentation. But it's one of the most fun things to experiment with. Because sometimes, you know, of course, you, you should experiment with all your music. But if you have something big riding on a song, you might not want to experiment too much. It might you know, mess it up or whatever. But when it comes to sound, experimentation is your best friend. Mm, That's the thing that's going to help you level up more than anything. It's not equipment. Don't worry about the equipment you have. Matter of fact, honestly, the worse the equipment is, the better the the sounds are actually going to be. And the more unique the sounds are going to be. So, yeah, just experiment. And um, once you've done everything that you've already done, find other things to do. Make up stuff to do. I have a sample of the Gap Band nobody has sampled. Would you love would love to share it with you? I'm willing to bet you don't. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yo, unless you unless that's your uncle or something. You, yeah, you might have an unreleased joint. That's a different story. Now nobody major might have used it. Yeah. Yeah. But and it might be a reason why somebody didn't use it. Mm. There you go. I, I'm I'm getting more curious about the sample by the day though. Yeah. Hey. You know, DMs are a thing. Yeah, d- yeah. DM me. Put Gap Band yeah. sample. Yeah. Uh, sampling was a trend before we knew it. It was called sampling. It won't ever die. Facts. Yeah, that is a fact. If I make the loop myself, is it still a sample? No. <laughs> Who has that? See you on the show. I, that's not like a flux question <laughs> right there. I thought that was flux. I had one of those nights. Trisa <laughs> asked him about it. This is uh, Monique Mikkel. <laughs> Man, yo. Yeah, we got mad stories. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's my homie. That's my homie. Yeah. She know about them, them nights. Them crazy nights. <laughs> you down for the stories? I'm going to talk about my LA, my L.A. trip in a little bit. 
It was some good stuff, man. I had some great sessions work with our artists. It was on Capitol. I did three songs with them so far. Uh, me and my homeboy Diego. Shout out to Diego, man. Diego is my brother, dog. If y'all don't know, Diego Av, me and him signed with Rico at the same time. Mm-hmm. We both were the new guys. Didn't know really nobody there. Diego become a monster. Diego is, when we talk about Millie, how we talk about Millie is a great producer. Yeah. Diego, yeah, to Diego me, like is, that. he's up there. He's I like, gotta meet that dude, man. Incredible, dog. Yeah. Like, dope producer. I know we know of each other, yeah. but I just, I gotta meet that guy. Uh, he got Grammys and stuff for mixing, so his drums and all this stuff is just always crisp. And he brought me along, man. Crazy sessions. We did yeah. some dope work. Uh, the I Stand It live stream was lit. It was, bro. I was in there for a little minute. Man, I had no idea it was even going on. I did, but it, it never registered. I just saw Hatch like, at, talking, but he had his phone. I'm like, oh, he's just taking pictures or whatever. I'm like, oh, we live, baby. We live. I'm so mad I missed him at the club, dog. Because I just know that would have been great Instagram footage, dog. <laughs> My man was going to get on the table. They, they clear off the table for him to stand on the dance. Move the bottles. Move the bottles. Yeah. But, um, yeah, shout out to I Standard for having me on the panel yesterday. They always dope. That's probably like the fourth fourth or fifth panel I've done with them. Yeah, Every doing. time, man. It's always dope. I always meet people that reach out to me online. Or right. We've been talking for years, but I never met them. Every time I meet a couple people and I'm like, this is awesome, dog. Yeah, man. I got a, uh, what was that year? One of the years we did the, I was with you with the I Standard Giant, the B Battle. A3C. Oh, it's A3C. Yeah, was it the I Standard event, though? Yep. It was yeah. year, bef- year before last. Yeah, maybe year before that, but it was Brian the first was year I went. Yeah, Brian and Knotts was there. Yep. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, that was the first year I went. And I ain't gonna lie, I walked through that, nobody knew who I was. Like, <laughs> no, like a couple people, like after a while, but for the most part, like I'm just, I was just there, right. enjoying it. Yeah, shit was cool. Yeah. Uh, Ron West Music says, "Is taxi a good service to use?" I, I I've been hearing mixed reviews about taxi. Honestly. Yeah. Here's the thing. I feel like the money that you could spend on taxi, you really could just do it yourself and just put in the effort. Facts. Yeah. And Facts. it's probably more... I don't know, man. I'm weird about stuff like that. Because the music industry, you guys have to learn. If you guys hear about me talking about being in the club, it's a reason why I'm in the club. The, especially Atlanta. It's not, very... Not for the turn up. Yeah, it's not for the turn up. It's a very political thing in Atlanta. Yeah, and you, the club is part of it. Yeah, you have to be there. Like, to get the records moving. Right. The, it's some people that won't meet you unless you meet at a club. Facts. A lot of business is done in the clubs. So stuff like taxi, it doesn't it doesn't give you that finesse that being there does and just talking with the people and having a conversation. Right. Being a producer now is, is just as much as being an artist than yeah. anything. Well, I think people get it confused. Like, oh, I'm going to make dope beats and send them out, and that's it. Like, yeah. literally, that is 10% of everything that you have to do. And so many people as producers, especially producers that are just starting out, think, I, submit, I, I made dope music and I submit it. It's rare that that's the only thing that's going to work for you. Like, that's, that's not right. really a strategy. Uh, one of the best strategies, and we talked about this yesterday at the uh, I Standard thing, having a team of people. Facts. That is it. You as a producer, like, you're creative. You want to make beats and you want to submit them. You're like, my job is over. Like, no, no, no. The website, you need to know how to promote. You need uh, video. You need somebody to do video. Mm -hmm. You need marketing. You need to do some research. (laughs) Like, you need an engineer. Like, all of these are things that initially you're going to do by yourself. You're going to do all these things. And I think you really should do all these things to by understand yourself. it. Yeah, so you understand what needs to be done. So when you delegate it to somebody, it's you easy. know what they should be doing. Right. But honestly, it takes a team. It takes a team of people because you are a brand. Mm-hmm. You, people think of themselves as a producer. I'm producer P Buddy or whatever my name is. Like, no, you are the brand P Buddy. So imagine if you were a brand of. Um, I don't know, sodas or, or movies or whatever. It's not one person. It's never going to be one person right. to run a brand. No, no, no. You need all of these working things. And I think people underestimate the fact that you need a team of people 
and you should be looking for people to work with and right. to delegate stuff to, and all y'all come up to, you know, together. Exactly. You you leverage what you're good at to help somebody else, and they leverage what they're good at to help. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's got to be a, a common goal. And everybody plays their part, too. It's no, no, it's no secret. We both have assistants. Yes. We both, no, I, I swear by my assistant. Yes, me too. No, I, and again, that came about, I was like, Oracle, yo, I think this VA thing, it might be, a, it might be popping. Yep. And then I tried it, it didn't really work out for me. He tried it, it, it popped worked. off. And yeah. I was like, okay, cool, so this works. So then we just kept trying it. Yeah. And we figured it out. We go back and forth. I bounce ideas off him, he yep. bounces ideas off me. We try shit, but our goal is the same thing. Yep. It's not just one, you know what I mean? If you, if you think of SoundOracle.net, it's not just one person. You think of what a producer kit, it's not just one person. Yeah, it's a team. It's, it's a team. And it might not, it, it, SoundOracle.net is mostly SoundOracle, right. but it's certain people that help with certain things to give different opinions. Yeah, that's back to my Uncle Ben reference. Right. You know, you got Uncle Ben Rice Company. It's mm -hmm. not Uncle Ben that's making a day of rice. Exactly. He's the face on the box, and other people, it's a whole factory and a whole brand of Facts. people that are making the actual rice that's how it really works all of your favorite people even if you just know them there is a ton of people Facts. behind them it's a whole company of people uh, let me get the michael jackson shirt right you know what i mean the moonwalker <laughs> real bad michael moon, jackson you know what i mean yes so guys i went to la i left i got there thursday i was out there for a little under a week um and I work with my homeboy, Diego. So, Diego, we both signed with Rico at the same time. Around the same time. Diego, I think he came first, and then I came right after that. Um, Diego was originally an engineer. He worked at Circle House. So, if you don't know what Circle House, Circle House is a huge studio in Miami. Mm -hmm. Everybody, Pharrell had a room there. Rico got a room there. Jim Johnson. Brian Michael Cox was just there yeah. last night. Everybody works at Circle House. So, I'm in Circle House in Miami. Me and Diego are the new guys. We get cool, because Diego's mom is a vegan. I'm a vegan. So he's like, oh, I'll take you to the restaurant. Cool, cool. So we get real cool through all that. And we are always the worst guys in that room. But we always ask questions. We're always really hungry on trying to figure it out. Mm. Now I feel like Diego, Diego's at that point where I think he might be one of the top guys. Like, Diego, I'm just waiting for him to pop off. He's one of those guys. I just know his time is like coming. You can see it. Yeah, any point now, his time is coming. He's going to be, when you hear Scott Storch and Pharrell, Diego's going to be up there. So he takes me around. First session, I don't know if I should. I'm not gonna say who whose house I was at. Fifteen, sixteen million dollar house. Fifteen to twenty million dollar house. My man, it's monkeys in this motherfucking house. This motherfucker got cats. Gorgeous house. I know who house it was. <laughs> we working through that situation. I met so many people just in that situation, being able to show up, make great music. They take us to the club and they fucking wraith a Rolls Royce wraith. Great time, go to the club, Migos is in there, we get a section, all of off the relationship, right? Cool, super great relationship. Next day, we go back, we work at the same house, right? One of the, highly, how do I explain this without explaining who it is? Uh, baddest baddies? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, famous lady. And when you think of people who are famous, right? I, I'll leave, leave it to this. So you think of the Kardashians, you think of the Obamas, you think of all these people, when you think of fame, Kanye, they are very close in this circle. And when I say very close, they're like one, they might have a child by somebody in that family. And they're just in the studio chilling, hanging out with us. Again, relationship. This goes back to me having a relationship with Diego from three years ago and me and him being cool. And now it turns out to lead me to another big play. So this is what you got. When I say you guys can't avoid the work, you can't, bro. It's no way around it. I couldn't avoid, I had to do the work. I had to be dope enough for when, so when Diego thinks of like people he want to work with, oh, I'm dope enough. Triz is that guy that I need in these sessions. Mm. So then he pulls me along in these sessions, which opens up me to more stuff. No, that's pretty much my career as man. As somebody like, yo, he's dope. He's the guy for this situation. Yes. Come in, come on in. And then you meet the craziest people from those situations off of that. And then you parlay that to meet the next people and the next people and the next people. And it mm -hmm. keeps going. But yeah, man, I'm from, uh, I grew up in a single wide trailer and on a farm 
in Virginia. You know what I mean? Real so me shit. being in a sixteen million dollar house blew my mind. Even still to say, I've been around shit like this, but it's just like it's still crazy that you could have this. Mm-hmm. It's not. It's not impossible to do this shit. It's just you have to associate yourself with the right people. You can't be fucking with with people who don't think this possible. So when people say you got to cut off certain people, it's not that you don't there talk you to them. You just limit how you talk to them, if that makes sense. Yo, that makes all the sense of the world. And that, yo, that was some real spit right there. I was about to be like, where them hearts? It was right before I said, yo, yeah, they, they started coming. Because right. that was real. We just had church right now. Damn it, I want to see some more hearts for that. Man. <laughs> it's real. It's possible. Nah, if I can figure this shit out. Literally, if you look up Halifax, Virginia, I say the population now is like 9,000. They still, it's places you can't get cable where I grew up at. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? People don't have internet where I'm at. It's not a thing because it's still country. If I could figure out how to get from there to where I'm at now and deal with the people I'm dealing with, Mm. it's very possible, but it's a strategy to it. It's work that's to it. And you just got to understand it. You have to do the work first. Mm. And you got to be smart about it. So I came back from LA super inspired. And it also made me think of the song is key. Song over everything, guys. Not the beat. Not the beat. That's the difference. It made me get back, because I ain't going to front. I've been on my beat making shit. I haven't, because guys, the music industry is weird. We talk about it all the time, but I was in a weird place of, this is all I did is try to make placements. For years, all my life was is make songs for other people. Mm-hmm. And then when that wasn't working out, I was like, damn, what the fuck do I do? You know what I mean? Like I don't know how to do anything else besides this. So I had to step back, reevaluate, move stuff around, change different stuff. And now I'm seeing the results from doing, being strategic and, and thinking about what I'm doing. You get what I'm saying? Right. So but then you adapted. I adapted. So now that I'm seeing the results from it, I'm getting all these rewards. So I might not make as many beats as I did, but the, the, the quality of what I'm putting out and the people that I'm meeting from what I am doing is mm-hmm. so much different. You're making them count. You no, know? it's no. I wish I could talk about some of the shit that is is one of them like moments of like I couldn't believe I'm in this situation. I'm like, yo, this is some bull. This is it's bullshit because it's just like this ain't my shit. This is the craziest shit I've seen. Right. Like, what the fuck am I doing here? You know what I mean? But it make you hungry. So now I'm like, all right, I want this. Yeah. This wasn't mine, but I want to be. I want this, and I'm close enough to get it. If and you, you can see the plays too. Exactly. By being there. And if you can touch it. You can have it. You just got to be smart enough to get to it. So, guys, please remember, man, just just work, 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 work. Right. Repetition. You know what I mean? Repetition is key. You really have to figure this out. And if you want to be a producer and get placements, stop trying to just make beats. Yeah. Songs. Yes. People don't buy beats. They buy songs. The only people that's buying beats is these rappers that's leasing beats for $25. Yep. And, uh, yeah, if you really <laughs> want to just sell beats, get into licensing. Yeah. But if you want to get a Rihanna record, Rihanna's not going to take your beat. It's not happening, bro. Take your song. If Rihanna, if you just give a beat to Rihanna, she's going to look at it like it's crazy. She'll take a song. Now, she might change the verses or whatever. But if the hook is good, they're going to keep that hook. You know what I mean? So you have to think smart, man. So, yeah, that was my L.A. trip. Incredible vibes. I'm ready to go back out there. And shit, if I ain't have all this shit going on and a kid on the way, my ass would probably move out there. Again, shit, I lived out there for like two years. I just came back because it was too much. Yeah, yeah, LA, LA. LA could be too much at the time. I was out that joint for like four years. It was off and on, but yeah. I'm like, whoa. LA it it could serious. be too much. Because yeah. the, uh, uh, the thing, even though I talked about being around all this like luxurious stuff, you have to remember that it's not yours either. Mm-hmm. And you, you really have to understand that just because you're in a, uh, I'm riding around in a race, this shit ain't mine. So this shit don't really matter. It's cool. It's an experience. Yeah. It's, you know, and so I'm always in this weird, like, uh, do I Instagram this because it's cool? But this shit ain't mine. And we talked about that. For some yeah. people, for a lot of people, that's cool enough. Right. I'm like, yeah, nah, if you if you, if you you real about yours, you're like, no, I want it to be mine. Exactly. I'm not going to sit out here and show it if it's not mine and I didn't get it. Uh, hey, the, I, I've done that like eight times today. Don't even worry about it. But um, well, Jameson spilled on the Michael Jackson. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Keep it. My, Mike needed a drink, Mike, cause Mike. <laughs> there we yeah. go. Yeah, Mike needed that drink. But no, nah, that's that's real though. 
That's real. Because you'll go out there and you'll be inspired. And the fact that you're out there is because you were doing the right things in the beginning. Exactly. And then you get around all these things, but then you're smart enough to know that, like, okay, I want this. This is not my shit. Because a lot of people don't stop. They don't get to that point right. where, like, all right, this is not mine. I you, you want it from the beginning. Right. Some people are like, yo, if I can just be around it, I'm good enough. No, 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 no. See, you got to use that to inspire you to be better. Yeah. And, and so that's what I took from it. Like, okay, cool. I made some incredible music, but what made the music incredible was who I was collaborating with and who was writing the songs. Mm-hmm. So now that I know that, I can take these same principles and do it 20 times over because I understand, okay, I got to find somebody I collab with really good. Okay, me and Oracle, we mm-hmm. always work good together. Yes, indeed. Now we just got to find a good writer. You know what I mean? And we can make 20 million hits. Mm. You know what I mean? It's up to us to, after that. Very true. Very so true. It, it was just eye-opening of seeing where, where you can come from and where you could go. And it's nothing like L.A. is good for you see somebody who made... 40, uh, somebody got a $250 million house. Something about that does something for you because the idea of somebody spending $250 million on a house alone means they probably made a... <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. And so that idea of what you think is a lot... It puts things into perspective for you. For them, a $100 bill is probably like a penny. How we yeah. look at pennies, a $100. And so you, the same shit with beats, man. Y'all think of like, oh, making one beat as a task or whatever. No, nah, we, nah, we do this shit all fucking day. You right. have to have this mindset that you could do whatever. Right. But yeah. be reasonable about it. Making a beat is not the job. Exactly. Making a beat is like getting dressed for work. Facts. You know but what I mean? But never going to work. Yeah, think about every day. You're like, yo, I got dressed for work. Yo, that was mad tough. I'm done. <laughs> right. Ooh, you never make it to the job. <laughs> right. To make the money. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. When there's so much other shit that comes after that. Yeah. You, you know, it, it's like you you do you do ten push ups a day, and you're like, yo, I'm mad tired. And so you <laughs> so you go out there, and you be around people that do a thousand push ups a day, and you're like, oh shit, I gotta set my shit up. Yeah, exactly. It perspective, man. Perspective is everything, and <clears throat> it's easy to keep things in perspective to see things uh, or see people that have less than you have, mm-hmm. but really putting things into perspective in the music is to see people that have more than you. Because when you see those people, they don't have a little bit more than you. They have (laughs) a million (laughs) times more than you. And you're like, oh, all right. It's It's possible. Yeah, what seemed daunting is just seem like, oh, that's just a necessary step, like a quick step. Because I got way far to go. Exactly. So yeah, man. For me, it was just a great experience of one, just getting out to Atlanta. You know, you got to understand, we've been in Atlanta for... Shit, I've been in Atlanta for 10 years now. Um, I've been here for like eight, eight and a half, nine years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been here 10 years. Two of those years, I was between Miami and L.A. But for the most part, Atlanta's always been part of where I kind of went to. So switching that up was great. Seeing other people working and the quality of what they're working. And again, you don't want to be the smartest person in the room. Mm-mm. When I was in LA, I was around people. Everybody makes great beats. So the the, the music isn't really the, the qualifier. It's the personality. It's all the other stuff. It's your branding type. People respected me because I had a brand. Yes. No, I, I got in the car. Dude said, Trizza, unquantized. The driver, right? No, he was just in the car. He's a homie. Oh, oh wow. He, oh, yeah. he was home. He's cool with Diego. Got you. And, but he knew exactly who we were. He said, Trizza, unquantized. Podcast. I love it. And... That gives me a different respect. So when I go to do other things, he fucks with me already. Mm-hmm. So when y'all say, how do you get these placements? You got to have that one thing that kind of gets you respect. So whatever that is, you got to work towards it. For me, it was me getting a placement with Dipset. Me and my brother did a song with SAS, Bird Gang, and all this stuff. I'm like 14, 15. We got that joint. That I leveraged that. I used that shit until probably 2000. Seven. Yeah. Dipset was in my shit for the longest because I leveraged that joint. I'm like, all right, I did something for Dipset. Every time I hit somebody, I said, yo, I produced this, 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 and I was on this. That yep. Dipset rang off. Like, oh, you know who that is. So I'm validated. So now you're at least going to give me a chance. So that led up to doing stuff with Young B and DJ Webstar and the Chicken Noodle Soup people. That led to, you know, doing stuff with Bieber. That led to doing stuff with Chris Brown. Mm -hmm. All this stuff is connected, guys. So you have to remember, 
it's not a shortcut. It's one thing that leads to another thing that leads to another thing right. that leads to another thing. You look back and you you have to really think about how you even got to where you are. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And it but it, it came from you doing stuff every day, even missteps, and then oh, yeah. you know recalculating your missteps. You facts. Every day you just work and work and work and work, and it feels like internally maybe mm-hmm. you're not working as fast as you are. But then you look back, like look mm-hmm. at the story you just told. Great. That came from just every day. Every, every day's what you gotta do. You, you gotta think if you get one percent better every day, in a year. <laughs> Hey, you you're three hundred sixty-five percent better if you just get one percent better every day. Mm-hmm. That's real. That's how you gotta think of it. So yeah, that was my LA trip. That was my LA story. I wish I could talk more about it, but all you guys gotta know is that I did ignorant, ratchet stuff in a wraith, and it felt great, man. Just great. Well, I, I show Oracle the videos, but I can't put them on social. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it was great, though. Anyway, let's see some hearts and hear some horns <laughs> for Trizza doing ignorant, ratchet stuff in a wraith. <laughs> <laughs>